Welcome to 343 Labs TV and The Logic Show. My name is Lewis Beck. What's up, Giselle? Thanks for your patience. And, um, yeah, my name is Justin Beck, also known as Lewis Beck, also known as Sylvan Paul. Um, I know so many names, so confusing. Uh, my real name is Justin. I go by the artist name these days, Sylvan Paul, but in the past, I went by the artist name, uh, Lewis Beck. So, anyhow, what the... Oh, what's up, Josh? Hello, also from NYC. Uh, so, what the Logic Show is, is it's an extension of 343 Labs TV, right? 343 Labs TV, very simply, the uh, online presence of... 343 Labs, which is a music production school here in New York City, and uh, we're also now based in Berlin, which is super exciting. That school's been up and running for a second, and um, we t offer courses in Logic, Ableton, Mixing, Mastering, Synthesis, um, Songwriting, pretty much everything that you you know could need to know or want to know in the uh, contemporary electronic music production landscape. Um, and yeah, you know, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If this isn't your first time joining us and you haven't subscribed yet, please, please subscribe. Uh, we have a lot of great content on the channel, uh, including uh, tutorial videos for myself and other instructors. And then you can also stay up to date with uh, the latest streams that are going on. We have live streams happening almost every day of the week, or that are during the weekdays at least. Anyhow, so last week, what we did was, is I explored Logic's uh, sampler, and that which was a, a new feature, which is really really cool. It's a super powerful instrument, and so what I was going to do this week is um, kind of just continue along talking about sampler, and this time we're going to do some more traditional sampling where we actually grab like pieces of songs and stuff. So last time what I was doing is I was dragging in one-shot samples and little loops and warping them and messing with them quite a bit. Um, but today what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start building a track uh, out of you know pre-existing records and dragging them into the sampler and showing you how that works. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my iTunes for a second and try to find a song that I can drag in. Although actually it's looking like maybe I don't have any music on here. Hmm, because I just got a new computer. Okay, let's see. This is a cool one. So I'm just going to quickly download a couple. So when you're sampling a record or just other music, right, what you're looking to do is find a section of a song that is like kind of sparse or something that like, you know, grabs you and that has a capacity to be repetitive and kind of set the tone for a song. So what I'm going to do is is I'm going to hit play on this, and you might not be able to see what I'm doing, but uh, I'm really glad you feel that way, Giselle. Thank you. We appreciate your support. Um, I'm going to press play on this song. You should be able to hear it, except it's not playing. Well, I'll just drag it into, into uh, Logic. Okay. Cool. 
So, the only reason I dragged it into Logic was so I could show you uh, possible workflows that you can use. So one of the cool things about the sampler is that you can drag things from Logic into the sampler, right? It doesn't have to be from outside of Logic. So I can take this and just drag it right into there. And what it's going to do is, right, is it's going to take this whole track and put it, as you can see, it's going to take a second because it's a pretty big file. And it's going to put it on a single key for me. So the whole song will be on there. Oops. Okay. So all I have to do is press down on the C key and it'll start playing the song. Right? Now, when it, in terms of finding something to sample, right? jump around a little bit. I'm going to move this over. It changes the starting point. I'm kind of liking that boom, boom, boom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom way out and drag the ending point over to here. I'll zoom back in. I'm going to try to get this starting point to be as close to the transient as possible. That's actually so cool. I really like that a lot. Uh, let's see, if I add a new group, I should be able to drag this over. It's fine, actually, I'll just drag it right into here. Same file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to sample this track quite a bit. I'm actually going to pull up uh, that first section that I was interested in, but I also really like that -da 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 kind of thing. So I'm going to focus on that as well. No, so I don't want to do multiple selection. Yeah, it definitely has a little bit of a Morricone vibe, Andrew, for sure. And uh, to answer your question, Jacob, um, we do offer private lessons. So if you reach out to uh, uh, the school, you can ask for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. It would probably be with me, to be honest. Now, to be honest, <clears throat> as much as I want to use the sampler for this, this isn't in 4-4. Uh, four, four. So what that means is it doesn't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And if it did, and if it does, which it technically does, uh, it's just really slow. It would be 1, right? It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. One, right? And then you can see right there, it's really in 7-4. Um, so that's a little, it's a little not what I'm going for right now. I don't, I don't want to make anything in 7-4. That's like a whole thing. Uh, so what I would do is actually, is I could take this track, right? Which is where I sourced this from. And I'll go to the spot. 
cool. So I think today's lesson is just going to be how to sample in logic, period. Because, yeah, you want to use the sampler if you can, but there's also a bunch of ways that you don't have to. So always important to try to find the spot right where it starts. You can zoom in a lot to do that. So I'll do this. And I'm going to drag this onto my one. And so I'm going to just quickly turn on the metronome and see how far off it is. Now, interestingly enough, if I speed it up quite a bit, I could try to make it so that that brown lands on the, on the second bar. I actually kind of think that's what I'm going to do. So you can kind of hear, right, how for a moment it is on. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to turn on flex time. Well, first, actually, I'm going to cut a significant bit of this out. And I want to keep it, but I'm going to use it on a new track so that I don't act, so I don't flex the whole file. Because right? that would take a, a while. That would kind of ruin my workflow. So I'm just going to do it flex for this period of time. That's quick. So for those of you who aren't familiar with how flex time works, it's Logic's version of warping, essentially, which is you know something from Ableton that allows you to take audio files that have. Sorry, for, give me one sec with the microphone. It allows. Ooh. There we go. It allows you to take um, audio files that are out of time with your project and lock them into time. Now. There's no one button that's going to make it happen automatically, particularly if you're working with non-electronic music, right? And the reason for that is because prior to electronic music, and still to this day, right, there's a lot of music that's made that doesn't relate to a grid, right? That's not strictly on time. It's going to be changing. And, like, this is a Brazilian, almost like classical flamenco samba crazy experimental song. So it's never going to stay on time. And as you can hear in the beginning, you know, there's just internal rhythm happening for this player. So um, it's not going to be perfect. Anyhow, what you do want to do, though, is you want to get as close as possible to sort of a rough estimation of what the BPM is at a certain point in time for what you're sampling, right? Which is why, if we zoom in close, you can see, I guess, kind of 139. It looks like if I go... Oh, so actually, I had to turn on flex, sorry. All right, hold on a second. Turn off flex here, and then I'll start moving again. So it looks like if I go like that, it's probably the, the closest approximation of this being on time. As you can hear, that it's kind of it's very close. I'll put it down to probably 141, 42. And so basically that first two bars is more or less on time. Now I say more or less because what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make sure that it is 100% on time. So I'm just going to click this back on, all right? Now something important to note with flex time is that if you have it on and you start changing the BPM, the whole point is that the file will not expand or shorten, right? It's now going to be locked into time with the grid. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see there, first of all, tons of these dotted lines. And so for some of you who are looking at that going like, why does this look like coding in the matrix? It's actually very, very simple. All that it is, is it's locating transients, right? So logic is has like a smart detector that is able to determine where transients fall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a marker only on areas that I want to be downbeats. So for me, it looks like it's probably going to be right there. All right, so that one falls a little late. So the thing, the way that this works for those of you who are unfamiliar with warping or flex time or anything like that 
is you want to make sure that you have if you're moving a marker around it's going to move things on the right and the left of it things that are before and after it so you want to make sure that if you don't want to move significant amounts of content and just want to move a little bit of the space in between you're going to set something right before it so I can move this right there and then it won't mess it up so you can hear that was super on right and now I'm purposely going to move this without any markers over here so that I shift everything more onto time in this direction And now you can actually hear, because this is really like exceptional, masterful playing, that this downbeat literally is falling perfectly on that quarter note. And even right there, it's basically falling perfectly. So what I would do is, is I would just, you know, take a spot right here and move this over a little bit. As you can hear, right, it's in a weird time signature. So it repeats after seven bars, right? As opposed to like, you know, what in standard Western music, it would be either four bars or three bars. So I'm just gonna take a little bit from the beginning. I'm actually gonna, I just want boom, boom, boom. That's all I'm gonna take. I don't need this downbeat over here. So I'm gonna delete that. And I can turn off flex without turning off the flex time. It's kind of like your automation view, right? So similar to the automation, if you click this, you see the automation, you turn it off, automation view goes away, but that doesn't mean the automation itself is gone, right? So if I click this, I just don't see flex time, but flex time is still active. So now, of course, what I have to try to do is figure out a way to make this somehow last a little longer, right? Now, here's a trick which comes from uh, 90s hip hop sampling, which is to take a little bit of delay and effectively turn on the delay only right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and make it a half note delay so that it delays right here Let's try that. Oh, well, that would help. <laughs> right, so now it doesn't end as, as, as like suddenly, and it actually sounds kind of cool. Like really cool, actually. Uh, so let's see if I extend this just a little. Which is cool. So the only thing that's happening now is there's a little bit of a clicking, clipping sound that I want to get rid of. Right, just from the audio cutting off at a non-zero crossing. So that's something to be very aware of, right? So if you cut off audio at any sort of peak point, um, you're gonna get that clicking sound. So if you just hit T and A, well, T and A, right? You get your fade tool. And then I could start it right here again, and now it doesn't sound that crazy. Now what I might do is I'm going to come back into here where I have set up 
right? This cool that sound. I'm gonna zoom in. Oh, excuse me, I just fucked it up. So I'm going to think about throwing that in right over here. So I'm going to kind of make like this. I'm going to imagine what I want the beat to sound like in my head. So I'm going to keep the metronome on. So I would go right there. Now when we loop back around, this is going to kind of be like the, the structure for my beat. Now here's the coolest thing about this, right? So I'll just call this like... For some reason, this is reminding me of Japan, even though it's Brazilian. So I'm just going to call this Japanese fall. Or let's call it walk down. You know, it's important to be able to uh, – sorry, excuse me. It's important to be able to um, name things so that you remember them. It doesn't really matter what you call it. People through the CV, sample, project. Five. I, I don't. We've done a lot of these, so I have no idea which one this is. But five seems safe. So what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to drag in. Ooh, where's my mind is not working right now. Sorry. All right. I'm going to drag in some 808s. And uh, or actually, you know, it could be fun. I could record some. Nah, that's actually just for workflow for for time. Let's let's just let's do these. All right, so I'm just gonna get a kick drum from my kick library. Um, which is being really weird right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I found an 808 that I liked. And now some of you might be surprised when you hear what this 808 sounds like. You're like, that's not what 808s are. Well, I'm not talking about like hip hop 808s. I'm talking about an 808 kick drum, just the kick or the, the kit itself, right? So for those of you that aren't aware, 808s, the reason they're called 808s is because it's just a distorted 808 kick drum. So this is what I'm going to add in. I'm gonna go half time, cause right, cause we're at 141, so it'll be super fast if I go whole time. So what working in half time means is that I'm gonna treat each two bars as if it's one bar, and each one bar as if it's half a bar. So I get this. So it's really slow. So let's call this 808 kick. And then I'm going to come in here and grab a tom. <laughs> okay, so now 
Oh, these are good. So that's a good sample. So what I'll do is, is I'm going to create another sampler kit. And I'm going to drag in the sample that I just brought in. And I'm going to increase, I'm actually going to put it on, to make my life easier, put the root note on C2. And drag it down, give myself an octave in either direction. And I have an idea in my head for what I want to do, so I'm just going to find. Now, I am not going to quantize what I just did. As you can see, it's not perfect, but as you also can see, it's pretty damn close. So I like to keep that kind of like human feel to things, even if it's electronic music. So let's loop this, we're working in here. I'll call these reggaeton toms. Make yourself make it help yourself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this same Japanese walk down one, right? And the thing is that I know that in my in my group area, right, I have the rest of the track. So I'm gonna go ahead and listen to a bunch of this track and see if there's anything I like. So that's great. So there's actually just a whole section. Of just these toms. I mean, sorry, of just these bongos or whatever instrument that whatever the instrument that is. Which is really cool. So I'm going to grab those. I'm going to see what these sound like first in the context of everything else. So all I'm going to do is basically just repeat this across this little bongo roll situation. I'm going to make it as loud as I can, highest velocity so I can hear it, right? So I'll just call this bongo rolls, loop it out. I might hit this, which is effectively done nothing, so that's okay. Um, now there are a couple ways that I can deal with 
this not being in time. I mean, it's not really, it's hard to have something that's so just like kind of chaotic be in time anyway. But one thing that I'm hearing is I'm going to try to use this universal audio plugin called the Cyclosonic Panner, which is exactly as cool as it sounds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these pan around. I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to find something else to sample, like another piece of music. Uh, now, I might just stick to this artist. I have this whole album from him. It's called Oh, So, first of all, the artist's name that I'm sampling, I should write this down, put it in the notes just so you guys have it real quick, is Baden Powell. And the album is Os Afro Samba. And it's an incredible album from, the, from 1966, I believe, from Brazil. Uh, really like unbelievable both in terms of the quality of the recording the the virtuosity of the playing and also just stylistically really interesting music uh, so if you get that have a look at it okay I'm gonna see if I can find anything else that I want to use from him well actually so again I, I don't think you guys can hear that but I'm going to pull in this song, which has some really cool percussion in the start of it, and try to pilfer some of that. So open up the sampler. Ah. Drag in some of this action. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I guess I have to drag it in here first for some reason. Probably because it's protected by Apple. It's so annoying. All right, so then I can drag it into here once it's in the program. It makes no sense. Okay. All right. That's pretty sick. Let's see how that fits. Highly doubtful it will. All right, well, I'm an idiot and I kept that on. <laughs> So again, this is so out of time that it's hard to use the sampler to actually do anything effective. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to use a kind of advanced technique for how to uh, sample using like the DAWs, or using just the DAWs built-in time warping engine, flex time. By the way, if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free to lob them in. Um, I hope that what I'm doing isn't overly complicated, but you never know. So it ends on here, right? So definitely. So it, the way that it's going right now would loop around right there. Roughly. So that's obviously not in time. So what I'm going to think about doing is 
is I'm going to snap out or tap out or however you would figure it out where the downbeats are in this sample organically. So I'm, I'm hearing one, two, three-ish, and then four right there. So what I can actually do is, is I could speed this up drastically if I want and go like this, which is be to just take this downbeat and move it over to the last one. So now I would have this, which is on time, which is really fast, though. A little crazy. I could also do the opposite, which is going to sound super weird and cool uh, and probably pretty awful, potentially. <laughs> and so, again, since I'm working in double time, right, or rather half time, instead of this being my second quarter note, this is going to be. So if this is landing on my final quarter note, I have one, two, three, four, which means if I stretch this over to here, I get this. And then that crazy speed up, of course. So what I'm going to want to do is, and this is kind of a, a fun little technique, is I'm going to stretch it from beyond the point, from like right here. So I'm going to get it to fall into time by pulling it from over here. I'll say create. Don't worry about it. And now I can cut here. And... Voila. And I have a loop. That's in time. And if I want, what I can do is, is I can correct the playing a little bit more. You got to be careful with this, with, with live instrumentation. A lot of the time, this can actually just make it sound unnatural and bad. That works, though. Now, one of the reasons this can be bad, right, is because we have to understand about rhythm is that it's not only about where one thing falls. It's about where one thing falls in the context of what fell before it and what falls after it, right? So if you move one thing into time, but the other things around it aren't shifted with it, it's going to sound off. But if it's like very minusculely off like that, then it's not a big deal. Anyway, so now I have this going for me. say I wanted to get rid of the, the, the shaker stuff, right? Let's say I don't like that. I do like that, but let's just say that I don't, right? Really easy way to solve that would be to just throw on an EQ and filter it out. Now, you're going to want to be gentle when you're filtering out a uh, stuff from a sample because when you create uh, when you create a low pass or high pass filter for that matter that's too steep particularly on f like full program material which is just means that it's like a whole song essentially then you're going to create distortion and, un and unnatural and unwanted resonances so you want to be very gentle with those curves just stopped being connected okay there we go no, whoa we're back okay that's weird 
right. So I can hear that the boom, boom, boom is not coming quite on time. So I'm going to adjust that. Boom, boom, boom. So it looks like it might be here. Cancel. So Command Z. I'm going to take you off. Let's see what happens with this now. No, nope. it's actually something weird happening. It's subtle. It's it's because they're it's because real music I mean, or instrumental music at least what's being played slightly different. So it looks like it's happening right there, maybe. Huh. There we go. Beautiful. So let's erase. And so then, of course, we still have that fading that's going on, right? That's bringing it to the left. Now, if I want to, I could speed this up. It's pretty languid. It's kind of like ridiculously slow. It's almost like stupidly slow to an extent. I mean, it's cool. Like maybe if you're a Burning Man, you know. But let's like move it. Let's keep it rolling a little bit, right? So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my sampler and I'm gonna turn on the follow tempo for all of my sampled pieces, including here, so that when I adjust my tempo up here, everything isn't thrown out of whack. Uh, and so since these are already warped, so to speak, they're already in, um, uh, they're already flexed, right? It shouldn't make that big of a difference. And these 808 samples, I'll flex them just, just in case. And I'm gonna just speed this up. Speed up a little more. Let's try to go to 160, so it's 80. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna keep messing with that. At this speed now so now I have a little bit more like thrust all right and so you don't have to ever be you know locked to what tempo you're working at or anything like that if you understand how to manipulate the audio correctly you can make it do whatever you want I'm gonna drag this hi-hat in here all right I have this going on okay so uh, create a new sample kit and then open up sampler. Drop this into here. So let me mess around with this for a second. Cool, so I'm gonna hit Shift R, right? Which some of you who have been watching this show will know I'm obsessed with that command where it's just basically I get to perform and then it automatically records what I'm doing without me hitting record. That's not for audio though, only for, for MIDI. So it's a little 
too much at the end there to repeat every other time, so I'll do it every fourth time. Glue these together. Let's see what this sounds like without the bass sample. So there's a little bit of low end frequency content here in the bongos. Oh, sorry, not there. So you can actually hear there's a really cool 808. Not 808, but a really deep, deep drum, frame drum hiding in there. Sounds like an 808. So I'm just gonna cut it out, right? That's really what EQ is useful for, more than anything. It's just getting rid of issues like that. So. That's good. I can play with. So I was going to use that as sort of like, it sounds like a synth, to be honest. It's like a really cool detuned synth when you're hearing it really quietly or sucks quickly like that. So I'm going to put these in time. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put them in like half quantization. Sound like she's saying sa. And it's functioning like a hi hat. Not too much mystery there. There we go. Now, if I want 
want, I can make this base more of like an actual base. If I want. Alright, so I can throw in like a plug in like this. And just make the low end huge. something like underneath it like a cool little like 303 kind of baseline that I'm hearing in my brain so I'm hearing boom 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 Yeah, things sound like it's an E. Yep, it's an E, so. Being weird. Thank you. Okay, I guess right there. <laughs> yes, that's what I want. All right. Scene. Yeah, no, that's a baseline, dude. Alright. Here we go. Could do something kind of weird and throw this whole thing into Dorian, which would be fun. Damn cool if I do say myself. Now 
there's a great plugin that I could use called it's my final gift to you from Waves Factory called Track Spacer, which is basically a sidechain plugin, but it responds to frequencies instead of amplitude. Um, all right, okay, what is it? Main blues sample. What? Oh, right, yeah, what am I saying? Uh, baseline. out of the way of the low end. Yes, that was that's cool. I might actually turn that into a track. Um, yeah, so that's all the time that we have for today. Sadly, uh, big thanks to everyone who tuned in to the stream. Really appreciated uh, your guys' comments here and there. Uh, again, if you joined us halfway through, this was Three Four Three Labs TV, and this is the Logic Show with myself, Justin Beck. Um, and what we covered today, right, was sampling using uh, the Logic Sampler, which we kind of went over last week, but I want to continue going over because it's such a powerful and interesting tool that they added to Logic now. And what we were mostly focusing on, right, was using it to uh, take, like, you know, music and, and twist it into something usable. Now we also, just as a reminder, right, we're focusing on how to be able to use flex time to also do this on the grid, right? So in terms of, like, if you're trying to really, like, become better at sampling, you, you want to be able to get both of these skills in your arsenal. Uh, you don't want to, you know, only be able to do it one way because what you want to be able to do is choose like, oh, does it make more sense and more practical? Is it quicker for my workflow to use the sampler or to just do this on the grid, right? You don't want to be sitting there 10, 15 minutes trying to get the sample on. It really, if you're good at it, it shouldn't take you more than about two minutes. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you dug the content, please hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great, great material on the internet. Uh, again, you know, 343 Labs is a music production school based in New York City, right? We also are in Berlin now, and we uh, have a lot of content online. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from us, and uh, I will be here 